Working on a bank holiday Now I see why you cry You've been watching your best days slipping by Thanks for downloading the Wheels of Wisdom podcast where I head out on two wheels to talk to interesting people about interesting things. For more on the show and to get in touch, visit wheelsofwisdom.co.uk. We're at the Volpine Cycling Festival in Teddington, which my guest today invited me along to. I would never would have heard of it before. It just shows within the cycling community there are all these little gems and eccentric things that you can find. And bizarrely, it's a cycling festival in what is effectively a bit of a, a pub garden. So it's probably the smallest cycle route that's there. But there's a massive crowd of people cheering on Chris Froome up to the top of uh, Mont Ventoux. Volpine, for those that don't know it, is actually a stylish cycling gear company that making rather attractive gear from fantastic materials and actually uh, conquering one of my personal gripes which is particularly now I'm starting to get towards my middle age and certainly my my middle is growing just how stupid I look in micro so I've been <laughs> campaigning for a while to get some really cool cycling gear to go that's practical and looks great so so it's quite amusing that I'm here with super cycling man who is in his <laughs> definitely pants not fashionable. and lycra although just this morning at the bus stop Somebody asked me, I would definitely buy a Super Cycling Man bike jersey if I produce some more. So, who knows? You could see some more Super Cycling jerseys out there soon. <laughs> so, so for the uninitiated, we could just get a, a little bit of background on your kit. So, it's been great what? seeing there, you... There are people who haven't heard of Super Cycling Man. Well, they, this after this, there won't be anyone left. Don't you worry. But it's been great actually seeing you interact with, with kids. How, so you're a primary school teacher. Yeah. How you, you're able to... You, connect with them get them excited and we're watching a little girl playing playing tennis just kind of looking up at you in awe at this strange <laughs> man so Shock. i should i should describe your your outfit so super cycling man <laughs> where are we going from top to of, bottom yeah so <laughs> fairly sensible middle? cycling shoes standard cycling chunky legs um <laughs> my favorite the lycra is there and then we get to the superman pants Yes. And then a lovely custom, custom made blue super cycling man top. And perhaps the pièce de résistance is, is the cape. And uh, actually a fairly sensible hat. Yes. So it would be good to just get a, a sense of where, where super, super cycling man came from and to get an idea of the, the big round the world trip that you'll be attempting or that you are attempting the second leg of very shortly. Well, super cycling man was born in the primary school that I work at, we were reading um, a story called Max by Bob Graham. And it's a, it's a lovely book. I recommend it to anyone um, to read it. It's perfect for um, five and six-year-olds, but it's also perfect for grown-ups. It, it totally changed my life. As the message of the story was that everyone has some kind of superhero powers. Everyone's good at something. And so we all designed our own superhero pants and capes in class. Went to Asda. Bought lots, bought 45 pairs of pants, got a few dodgy looks from the salespeople. <laughs> we all tailor made these uh, superhero costumes, and I, I modelled a pair of pants with Super Cycling Man on because I, I was very keen, I am very keen on cycling. And I just thought, I've, oh, I've got this pair of pants and cape now, what am I going to do with them? They're too good to throw away. And I thought, I, I went to France on a, on a cycle trip and I wore the costume there, and I had a great reaction from people. And I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these around the world now. And um, and the rest is is history. So Super Cycling Man is now going to be the first man in a superhero costume to go around the world on a bicycle, hopefully. First Superman to travel the world. Yeah. Or well, perhaps the second, if you believe the movies. But uh, so, so you was he on a bike? A... Oh, he... he doesn't need a bike. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was um, cheating. He was flying. He was. He was. Yeah, so I imagine you've had a few comments of why you're not flying around the world. Yes, lots imagine. of white van men yeah. leaning out. Hey. That's one thing I was interested in, is, is the reaction, because I'm sure 90% of the reaction is very positive, and people take a lot of it, take in the fun, but perhaps when you mm. go to some of the stranger places, if you get you know, equivalent of a R8 lorry driver or a kind of jeering set of kids, or you know, have you had many negative reactions, or it's such a small part? I The... The overall reaction is just immensely positive, and I think that would be, in a way, I don't, I don't think the costume changes 
the reaction to to cycle tourists or people cycling long distances very much to be honest i think you get people being very kind to you all over the world i think maybe lorry drivers give me a bit more space with my cape flapping around <laughs> in the cycle lane so that's a good thing but i think overall i'm just from country to country i'm just blown away by how friendly people are when they when they meet people doing crazy challenges or taking on adventures like this i went on a a trip on our mutual friend Tom Cobble Davis's tandem, mm-hmm. and it's a very old traditional tandem, and two so thirty something men on them. You make a bit of a sight, and actually, mm-hmm. I found that doing something a little bit different like that pushed me out of my comfort zone. I just had a big smile on my face. Yeah, and, you know, and the amount of people we interacted with yeah. that day, even in just Tunbridge, yeah, little old Tunbridge, it just people really seem to respond. I think that's why I started it. Is that I thought I could, I could cycle around the world in regular cycle kits and you know you you do get a good response from from people if you do that obviously but i thought i really i really wanted to push it to the next level and 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 really get involved with with people that um i would meet on the way and i i have got a bit of a a track record of doing things in fancy dress i have (laughs) cycled from london to monaco in a roman gladiator costume i have done a, a a a run in a banana costume and so the yeah, fancy dress is a bit of a problem I've got, but it, I find it really does have just adding. I'm, I'm basically in regular cycling gear with a pair of pants and a cape on. It's not that different, but just the response is 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 well worth it. I find. So we should talk a little bit about the the trip because you've already done the, the first leg, and I think one of the the themes of the podcast that, that I've been trying to explore is how people find little pockets of adventure around their their lives because. And life catches up with you when you get old and you get tied into houses and schools and jobs and mm. um, everyone dreams of doing great trips like around the world like Al Humphreys or like you're doing or Tom yeah. Paul Davis has done. But what I found particularly interesting was how you plan to, to break it down around the school holidays. So I understand you've done, today interestingly, I noticed we've done Tooting to Teddington's. We've done nice. the T to T. Great. But your trip is around the other T to T's, isn't it? So you've done Tooting to Turkey's Turkey, done, and then yeah. next is Turkey to, to Turkmenistan. So yeah. You to get work work through the T's. You can talk exactly. Yeah. I I like to keep things with silly names in because it's easy to remember for me and for for people to follow. So yeah, I've I've broken my journey up into seven different years. Essentially, so so I've got something to look forward to every mm. year. It's a, it's a great thing to look forward to in the summer. But also just the, the cold reality of, of financial situation. I, I don't have ten, fifteen thousand pounds, which realistically that's what a, a world cycle in one go would cost. Yeah. Um, to spend on that. So I'm keeping my day job. I put away a few thousand pounds every year, and and that is my uh, my idea of a, a perfect summer holiday to to go four thousand kilometres from one other town to another town, beginning with T. So it's been good the last couple of weeks. It's got in some training because it's actually been blisteringly hot. Every other podcast I've done without exception, where I've been outside, I've been absolutely freezing. Mm. So I turn up on a cycle nice and sweaty and then steadily endure the, the interview through the cold. But it's been absolutely glorious. So much for you, Turkey to Turkmenistan. Yeah. Like, it's going to be pretty unpleasant it, in summer. The first thing I've packed in my panniers is some Factor 50 plus sun cream. <laughs> If any of your podcast listeners have any top tips for how to keep water cool in 40, 45 degree heat, I'd be very appreciative of any advice. Because I think that's going to be a big issue of there's nothing worse than drinking lukewarm water. And I, I found last year, just when I was starting to get into the hot turkey area, if it's 30, 35 degrees, your water starts going tepid and, and warm and it's horrible. Yeah, I'm currently doing some very amateur experiments on various bottles i've got sig bottles plastic bottles thermal squeezy bottles lined up in my in my garden in heat in the sun i'm seeing which one stays cooler for longer but um, i'd appreciate any advice that people have used so have you tried to freeze your water the night before and it will slowly melt during the day or I mean, that, that's difficult to get access to a freezer and uh, that's the problem someone yeah. just suggested some ridiculous idea of having some kind of usb charger and producing my own ice cubes on the way <laughs> and i can i will be powering a, an iphone and a and my own garmin sat nav on the way with with a very funky um dynamo device so um, you, but dynamo, i can't produce ice a dynamo iphone charger yeah well, that is a gadget off to my own heart yeah so 
Jake is I, I quite like to get lost in yeah. the countryside and I, I rely on an iPhone to get me home. That would be very good for those occasions when it runs out of juice. I think just look for plug, plug dynamo USB charger on, <laughs> on Google and it'll come up. But it could be a lifesaver. Okay, that's going on the site along with any other inventions you can come up with. So wheelsofwisdom.co.uk. Um, oh, going back to the ice thing though, mm. I think I'm going to be wild camping for quite a lot of the trip from Turkey to Turkmenistan. So that does immediately knock out the ice option but again i might try and stay in some locals houses as well as i've heard the hospitality just gets more and more insanely warm the, the further away you go from home so i'm looking forward to staying in some iranian people's houses and maybe persuading them to give me some ice before i head off in the morning what's your route where are you going through from turkey and you know are there any no-nos on the list that you having to do a, a journey to avoid or I'd say up until just a month ago, or if I'm being really honest, maybe just last week, not that I'm a last minute person or anything, I was going to go north of the of the Caspian Sea and go through Russia and Kazakhstan and to get to Turkmenistan. But I've, I've watched one sort of personal hero of mine, Jamie McDonald's videos of him cycling through Iraq and Iran. And it was just, it just looked incredible. Like the people looked so friendly. He just, he, he just said essentially, if you don't go through Iran, Iraq, you're missing out. So I changed my route, and I'm I'm going um, all the way across Turkey, following the the Black Sea coast. Then I'm going to head into Georgia, which again I've heard that the people are incredibly kind there and hospitable for cycle tourists. Then I'm going to dive down into Armenia, meet some some friends in in Yerevan, and then go over a few mountains quite slowly, I imagine, um, and then into Iran. Hopefully, I'll. If I, um, the plan is to pick up my um, Iranian visa, visa in Armenia, because obviously there's no Iranian embassy in London. So I'm hopefully the Iranian visa will be waiting there for me, and I can enjoy going through Iran, um, follow a bit of the coast of the Caspian Sea again. Apparently that's a big holiday resort for Iranians to go to. And then get into Ashgabat, into Turkmenistan, and finish off with a nice trip to a place called the Door to Hell, which I've been told is... Fantastic to see. What is the door to hell? That sounds very evocative. It sounds, it sounds like an album title. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Chris Rear's follow-up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll be the background track on my YouTube video for yeah. when I get there. It's just a big, big hole in the ground, essentially, with sort of lava bubbling up. And um, I think um, I, li- I like the idea for my, uh, for my future kids' uh, best-selling book, um, Super Cycling Man... Turkey to Turkmenistan, brackets, the door to hell. I think a, a trip to the door to hell, that sounds quite dramatic. So, so we were having a look at your, your bike earlier, mm. but, um, <clears throat> and you were saying you've now experimented with, with panniers, and uh, there's, I was quite intrigued, so you, you cycled all the way to Turkey with just a backpack, and yeah. no panniers at all, it just goes against the, the general flow of a, so mm. it'd be nice for, cause we have a, a lot of cyclists that, that listen in, just to describe your bike and the panniers that you've got and your experience of testing those out yeah I, i'm i am i was quite happy with um just having a backpack on for my first leg um it did make it quite hot hot um and, and sweaty i won't deny it but um at least you can keep your bike as it is all stripped down it was nice and light and i'm I quite like saving weights i'm quite a, a gram weenie and i quite like racing bikes but this, it's quite nice to have panniers for, for these future legs around the world, um, even though it has added considerable weight to the bike. I'm, I, I'm used to riding an 8 kilo bike, and this surly um, pacer is 13 and a half kilos already. And the panniers, good old Ortlieb, um, can't go wrong with those. That's been recommended to me for being waterproof. And I've got some nice touches on there. From The, the bike was given to me by a, a really friendly bike shop called the London Cycle Workshop in London, and they're obviously... <laughs> They've added a very personalised world traveller saddle from Brooks on there. There's a Union Jack Thompson seat post. And there's even that very attractive plug USB charger on there, which uh, you're so keen on. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and some pink take... handlebar tape, which is the finishing touch. Is that your personal <laughs> addition, is it? That was the, uh, the bike mechanic's sense of humour, I think. <laughs> it's no mountain side, it's just a hill that's all. But you can see for miles And it's beautiful Makes me glad now So one thing I was, I 
wanted to to touch on was cycling touring in in general because we actually met at Sean Conway's mm. talk through the very laudable million to one scheme. Mm-hmm. And Sean Conway is someone who attempted the world cycling record until a American SUV took him out and is back out, but mm. still managed to complete the journey, but not in the, yeah, the record time. And now it's currently, as we speak, somewhere off the Bristol coast, attempting Land's End to John and Groats by sea. It's been done, I guess, in so many thousands of different ways. My small circle in last year of school friends involved in cycling across, uh, sorry, cycling across the Atlantic, in uh, rowing across the Atlantic in a race of 20 odd boats and cycling so across the Atlantic would be good that would be the next big thing yeah someone has they, and I guess that's pedal low power boat that's my question about whether we people we're starting to almost run out of things to do or particularly because I mean in your case you're you're having to raise a hundred thousand pounds for charity for Parkinson's UK and uh, cancer and, yeah and four others world cancer research yeah. funds and I guess the the question is really around for collecting that hundred thousand pounds. You need to get a lot of mm. attention and people interested, and there seem to be so many people out there doing yeah. these wonderful, life-changing trips of kind of what's left out there to do. I know with with you, you've got the, the yeah. Superman angle, and that's just, that's another reason why I I chose to do a world cycle in in a strange costume. Is I thought you know I, I could I could just go and do doing regular cycling gear, and that would be really really fun, but yeah, to to get a really good response from people, and whoever says that it's it's not all about records, it's not being first, I think they're lying because it is cool to say I'm going to be the first person to mm. cycle around the world in a superhero costume. <laughs> it's cool to say that, and I think it does inevitably help you get sponsors and press coverage, and people are interested in first, no matter how stupid they are. So we should also talk about the other side of the trip is that you do a lot of talks in primary schools to try and get kids interested in cycling to start cycle clubs get them interested in healthy living and as the question would be i mean we're looking six seven years but it's kind of what's next what yeah what about the end i mean is there i presume there's some oh. some books there's some tours yeah where do, you, where do you see things progressing i'd really like to turn super cycling man into my full-time job i mean it, it seems like it is at the moment i, yeah. I finished my my day job at my primary school uh, in london and it, straight away i'm on to looking for more sponsorship for for my future cycle trips i'm I'm trying to drum up press coverage i'm making change to my website it's it's and and then i'm hanging out at cycle festivals the weekend it it is pretty all-consuming i I would love to to write some children's books about the adventures of super cycling man obviously i would say that they're going to be funny and and great children's books but i i'd I'd love to do some more talks at, at primary schools i think there's a lot to be pulled out of a trip to be learned about different cultures and countries about just simple kind things that you know people can do for each other just a simple gesture of you know offering a coffee or opening a door i I get that all the time (laughs) as i'm cycling around hello so we're getting some children in the back hello superman it's super cycling man superman's in the air i'm on my bike can you see my bike that's going to go around the world Hopefully. <laughs> it's go- I'll tell you, no, it's going around the world. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll give you my card so you can even follow the trip and they can, they can find out that I'm going around the world. Lost Super Cycling Man for the second time to oh. small children. <laughs> How global is, is Superman as a as an icon? Do you think there's any kind of negative uh, association with him in different parts of the world? Or? Don't joke. This is a serious point from my dad, who is very worried about the, the stint in Iran. So he he brought me back down to earth with a bit of a bang when he said, um, "So let me let me just get this right as well. Um, you are thinking about going to Iran, where they burned down the U.S. embassy just a few years ago." And you're going as a symbol of American power <laughs> to that country, and basically you're you're not going to keep a low profile, and <laughs> you're going to try and make videos whenever you arrive in new towns and cities and, and get public interest. And I can just about see th- that point of view, <laughs> but I don't think I think there's a bit of a difference between some guy on a bike in cycling gear 
and politicians in positions of power. <laughs> I've been told reliably by lots of the cyclists I know, and I've been in touch with some Iranian cyclists about you know, how would my pants go down, so to speak, in Iran. And they've said that children would would find it just as hilarious as children would do in the UK. I'm going to find out. So it's going to be a real learning experience for me. I might tone down the pants, I think, especially as it's just after Ramadan when I get there. Um, so I might go baggy shorts over the top of some cycling shorts. But apparently cycling shorts are, are also okay, but I'll go I'll, uh, err on the side of caution. The only thing more powerful as a global icon than, than Superman is silly <laughs> costumes. So hopefully people see that side of it. I think that that's a, that's a really good thing about a world trip is that you do see that there are certain things that every country, every culture has in common. And one is certainly the ability for huge kindness. And the second is a sense of humour. I'll, I'll, I'm going to gladly make some, some, some videos and post some photos of hopefully Iranians posing with me in front of some tourist sites wearing superhero capes. Hopefully that will... Uh, Amuse my dad as well. <laughs> so you've got your, your school holidays to get round them, so you've got a, a deadline. Did I read you attempt to do 100 miles a day? Yeah. And how much time does that allow you to interact with the locals and cycle for a bit of culture, or is it to get there <gasps> yeah, at the end of the day? It's, uh, I've, I've, in the past, I found doing 100 miles a day with all, lugging all your gear around, it, it is a pretty it's like an honest day's work. It's, it's pretty well eight till... Eight or seven, eight or eight or eight, so twelve hours on the road, and I, that is with six meal breaks. I, fa- I found I, I personally, I needed two breakfasts, two lunches, and two dinners to keep that that kind of amount of exercise going. As apparently, you get through five or six thousand, you burn five or six thousand calories a day. But I do have time to to stop and chat and take some silly photos and make some videos with the local people. But I don't really have time for you know going around the tourist sites and watching a movie and doing some shopping yeah so um, i'm in a hurry but not crazy hurry mm. i mean do you wish you could do it a little bit slower and stop somewhere some um do? i kind i kind of like keeping moving as I, I think if i if i reduced the mileage anymore i'd probably be doing my world tour when i was 75 yeah. and signing up for the next six years is a is a hard enough for me to get my head around because that'll mean i'll be 40 two by the time I finish it, which is probably about time I should settle down and do something a bit more sensible than hang out in a <laughs> Superman costume. Write children's books about the Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. the man with a plan. For those that want to, to follow your, your journey, you'll be starting in August the... Yeah. Or, um, just to keep it simple, some... like the alliteration of the title, Turkey to Turkmenistan, it's all through August. Okay. So, yeah, August the 1st. So August the first, and we can follow you on supercyclingman dot com. That's it. Yeah, he's all over the social networks. He's on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Vine and anything else that you can throw at it. But yeah, the supercyclingman dot com website's the one to to start with. Thank you very much for your time. So we only met randomly <laughs> once, and I was sitting in a park doing a podcast <laughs> interview. But it goes without saying, no, I wish you very best of luck with your your trip, and we'll be following it. Thanks. I hope you come back safe and sound and uh, what's hearing about the next part. I hope you might be in a cape and pants next time well, I see yeah, you. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to revise my outfit a bit. I think my shorts are looking a little, little bit dull, so... You've seen what never, happens. Never lycra. Never You've lycra. seen what happens when you have a cape and pair of pants on. It's great. I know. It's like Pied Piper. <laughs> Children <laughs> running up to him. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Will. No worries. So thanks again to Will, a.k.a. Super Cycling Man, for uh, what was a great, fun afternoon. And and just showing that if you're short of inspiration for your next big trip, slap on a pair of pants and a cape and off you go. And so to lead us out, friend to the show, Marcus, and uh, a little track that featured during the podcast with probably the best intro for a cycling podcast you could possibly have. It's Marcus and Forest Hill. It's no mountain side, it's just a hill that's all But you can see for miles and it's beautiful Makes me glad now And I wanna tell you something I don't know how to say 
try to find a way to show you someday. Don't be sad now. Cause you're with me, you are here still. And we're happy on Forest Hill. We used to have so much more to say But there's nowhere else I would rather be Than in the shade of this apple tree It's no mountainside, it's just a hill 